Alrighty. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be the second part of my video. I had to wait till my stepbrother left because it was noise upstairs. So now I'll be what? I'll be continuing this video. I'm gonna be re I'm gonna read the rest of the second half of chapter one, which is Bilbo's long expected party. I believe it's called long expected party. I believe. What's it called again? I even forget the name of the fucking chapter. Yeah, long expected party. I'm gonna take you for a ride as I'm gonna read what the rest of this. So really, if I don't know if I read if I if I do a series every day, I can it's a, I can even, in two months I can get to what? Because what is he speaking in two to three days? If I read fifteen pages a day in two to three days, I can get through one chapter. Obviously, so there's a good chance like perhaps I might even I might even do the whole book, not not the whole Fellowship of the Ring book, the whole book book one, book one is what. Not the whole, but there's a good chance I can do, I, I don't know. I might maybe get up to maybe Tom Bombadil or something like that. I might maybe read it up to Tom Bombadil or the Old Forest. We'll see how it goes. If, 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 if I'm drained of energy... If I'm drained of energy, then what? Then I'll what? You know, but I'll see how it goes. Let's see speaking, for now I'm aiming at three to four chapters. And if, and if, let's say, for example, if it's the end of, I don't know, if it, by the end of September, if I've already read four chapters, I'll continue it, I'll continue it, I'll continue my series until, until I make my final announcement. There's a good chance I'll do a good, a good half of the first book. The first book of, uh, of book, first book of book one. First, first half of book one in Fellowship of the Ring. Because Fellowship of the Ring is divided into two books. You have book one and book two in Fellowship of the Ring. Book three, book four, and two towers, and book five, book six, in 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 in, 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 in um in the Return of the King. So you have books within the book. You have books. So Fellowship Ring is divided into two books within the one book, obviously. Just like Zanius is one book and it's divided into three volumes within the one book, obviously. Right. So now I'll start reading because I'm running out of time here. I want to get to the to, if I want if I want to read the whole chapter, I have to start reading now because it will take me a good like 45, 50 minutes just to read. Just to read what? So I read the prologue. You guys got you guys got the history of the hobbits. I read the first half of of, of Long Spit the Party. You got the idea of what Bilbo's one hundred eleventh party. The you know what I'm saying the, the invitations. Bilbo leaving, Bilbo disappearing in the, in the middle of a speech during the party. You got, you got, you got some history with Frodo. Frodo's 33 years old. He's born on the same day. He has the same birthday as Bilbo. Bilbo can't age because he has a ring. You got some history with Sam. Sam's father's a gardener. He's friends with Bilbo. Frodo's a cousin of what? Of, uh, Frodo's a cousin of, 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 of Bilbo. His pal's parents drowned. You got some history there, obviously. And now I'm continuing it off. Now, now we're in the part where Bilbo, Bilbo, Bilbo leaves the party. He right. Everyone wonders where he is. They, they they think he's crazy and he pulled a prank, obviously. And then he go he goes to his house, and that's where he and that's where he prepares to leave. And he meets Gandalf. Gandalf. He meets Gandalf, obviously. He takes the ring. He seals it. He puts it on the mantle. And he puts the ring back in his pocket. Why? Because because the ring can possess people. The ring is everybody's precious. That pretty much sums up what what I've read so far in chapter uh, in chapter chapter one. Again, if I'm mistaken, Lord of the Rings nerds, bear with me as I'm not well grounded in Lord of the Rings story. <laughs> yeah, you gotta bear with me here. Now let me start reading because I'm running out of time here, and I'll read it with life this time. Well, I read it with life yesterday, but I'm gonna read it with life. That way, it's more interesting. Because when you read it out loud, when I watch my videos, I'm like, oh my god, like Lord of the Rings is. is all of a sudden more interesting because I'm reading it with life, obviously. I guarantee even Victoria Justice is enjoying this video, you know what I'm saying? It's interesting. So I'll start off where I left off yesterday, okay? Right? So I suppose you feel that everything has gone off splendidly and according to plan. Yes, I do, said Bilbo. Though that flash was surprising, it quite startled me, let alone the others, and little additions of your own, I, 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 I suppose. It was. You have wisely kept that ring secret all these years, 
and it seems to me it seems to me necessary to give your guests something else that will seem to explain your sudden vanishment. So Gadoff was pretty much telling Bilbo, "Hey, look, man, you've kept your ring a secret because you kept your ring a secret for many years. It's I think it's I think it's about time you give them an explanation for you vanishing out of in out of thin air, obviously, right?" So Gandalf knows about the ring, obviously. He, Bilbo, he, Gandalf is the only one who knows about the ring. There's, uh, Gandalf knows about the ring, but everyone in the Hobbit, everyone in Hobbit, and they're left in the dark because Bilbo hasn't told them that he has a secret ring, obviously. And which, and, and would spoil my joke. You are an inter, you are interfering, old busybody, laughed Bilbo. But I expect you know best as usual. I do when I know anything, but I don't feel too unsure about this whole affair. It has now come to final point. You have had your joke and alarmed or offended most of your relations and given the whole shy something to talk about for nine days or 99 more likely. Are you going any further? So Gandalf was obviously mad at Bilbo for, for disappearing out of nowhere, obviously. Yes, I am. I feel I need a holiday, a very long holiday. Again, this is not in this, this dialogue is not in the movie, man. Hence why you, you see what I mean when I say the books are different from the movies. Yes, I am. I feel like I need a holiday, a very long holiday. As I have told you before, probably a permanent holiday. I don't expect I shall return. In fact, I don't mean to, and I have made all arrangements. I am old, Gandalf. I don't look it, but I am beginning to fill it in my hearts of hearts. Well preserved indeed, he snorted. Why I fill all thin, sort of stretched, if you know what I mean. Like butter that has been scrapped over too much bread that can't be right. I need a change or something. Gandalf looked curiously and close, closely at him. No, it does not seem right, he said thoughtfully. No, after all, I believe your plan is probably the best. Well, I made up my mind anyway. I want to see mountains again, Gandalf. Mountains. That's in the that's in the movie, obviously. And then find somewhere where I can rest in peace and quiet, with a lot of relatives prying around and a string of confounded visitors hanging on Bill. So Bilbo obviously wants to go on another adventure. Obviously, he doesn't want to stay in the Shire anymore. Obviously, he feels out he's too old and he should go on an adventure. Obviously, right? I have thought of nice ending for it, and he lived happily ever after to the end of his days. That's in the movie, obviously, but the, but the, but 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 the movie left out a lot of dialogue that's written in this book, obviously, written in the book. Gandalf laughed. I hope he will, but nobody will read the book. However, it ends, obviously. Oh, they may in years to come. Frodo has read some already, and as far as it has done, you'll keep an eye on Frodo, won't you? That's in that's in the um, in the in the movie, obviously. Yes, I will. Two eyes. That's in the movie. As often I can spare them. He would come with me, of course, if I asked him. In fact, he offered to once just before the party, but he does not really want to. Yet I want to see the wild country again before I die, and the mountains. But he's still in love with the Shire, with woods and fields and little rivers. You ought to be comfortable here. I am leaving everything to him. That's in the movie, obviously. Right? So he's leaving He's leaving his wealth. He's leaving all that stuff to Frodo, obviously, because he's, he's taken off. Bibble's taken off. He ought to be comfortable here. I am leaving everything to him, of course, except a few oddments. I hope he'll be happy when he gets used to being on his own. It is time he was his own master now. Everything, said Gandalf, the ring as well. You agree to that, remember? Well, yeah, well, er, yes, I hope, I suppose so, Sam Bilbo. So Gandalf, so, 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 so Bilbo says, I am leaving everything to, I'm leaving everything to Frodo, obviously. And then Gandalf is like, what about the ring? Are you going to leave that to him too? And Bilbo is hesitant because the ring is everyone's precious, obviously. The ring is like, Possesses every possesses you obviously, everything. The ring as well. You agreed to that, remember? So Bilbo agreed to leave the ring to Frodo, obviously. Well, uh, yes, I suppose so. Where is it? In an envelope, if you must know. Said Bilbo impatient. That's in the movie, obviously. There on the mantelpiece, right? So remember how Bilbo he he sealed the ring and he put it on the mantelpiece and he put it back in his pocket. Gandalf asks him, "Where's the ring?" He's like, "Yeah, it's on the mantelpiece." And then and and when in reality the ring is in Bilbo's pocket because what? The ring, even the ring, subconsciously what? It subconsciously can even make you what? The Bilbo can even the Bilbo because the the ring what? The ring can make you evil. Obviously, I think that's some good symbolism there. I, I guarantee you a lot of Lord of the Rings fans didn't catch that. Look, Bilbo put the ring, sealed the ring, he put on the mantelpiece, then he put it back in his pocket, and then here, and and, and knowing full, and yet Bilbo told Gandalf that he that he would leave the ring to to, to, to Frodo. Gandalf asks his Frodo, where's the ring? And the Bilbo's like, it's on the mantelpiece, when in reality, it's in his pocket. Because the ring is everyone's precious, and the ring can possess you. It can make you evil, obviously. I thought that was a good, some, some good symbolism there, obviously, right? In the envelope, you must know, said Bilbo impatiently. There on the mantelpiece. 
Well, no. Here it is my po in my pocket. See? Isn't that odd now, he said softly to himself. Yet after all, why not? Why shouldn't it stay there? So now the ring is starting to possess him, obviously. Gano looked again very hard at Bilbo, and there was a gleam in his eyes. I think Bilbo, he said quietly, I should leave it behind. Don't you, don't you want to? Well, yes and no. See, the ring is starting to possess Bilbo, obviously. Now it comes to it. I don't like parting with it at all, I might say. I don't really see why I should. Why? I don't really see why I should. Why do you want me to, he asked. And a curious change came over his voice. It was sharp with suspicion and annoyance. You are always bothering me about my ring. See, the ring is starting to what? Possess Bilbo. Like I said earlier, obviously, right? He was going to, he put it on the mantelpiece. He told Gandalf that he'll leave the ring to Frodo. And now he slipped in his pocket. He said it's on the mantelpiece when he in reality he slipped in his pocket. And now, and now, and now Bilbo's getting angry because Gandalf is annoying him about, by asking him, are you going to, are you, are you going to leave the ring behind? And Bilbo's getting annoyed by that. He's, he says, yeah, Gandalf, you know what I'm saying? He's like, well, yes and no. So Bilbo wants to give the ring to Frodo, but at the same time he does it because the ring's possessing him because the ring is everyone's precious, obviously. Right? It was sharp and suspicion and annoyance. You were always badgering me about my ring, but you have never bothered me about the other things I had gone on my journey. No, but I had to badger you, said Gandalf. I wanted the truth. It was important. Magic rings are not are well. Magical and they are rare and curious. I was professionally interested in your ring. You may say, I still am. I should like to know where it is if you go wandering again. Also, I think you have had it quite long enough. That's in that's in the uh that's in the uh that's in that's in the uh the uh what the movie obviously. So Bilbo had the ring for sixty years, obviously. You won't need any more Bilbo, unless I am quite mistaken. Bilbo flushed, and there he was there was an angry light in his eyes. Again, the ring is possessing Bilbo, obviously, because the ring is evil, obviously. His kindly face grew hard. Why not? he cried. And what business is of yours, anyways, to know what I do with my own things? It is my own. I found it. it came to me. Remember, the, remember that scene in in, in 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 the movie? They got they they got that the ring is possessing Bilbo when he's starting to what become evil, obviously, because the ring is evil, obviously. Yes, yes, said Ganto. But there's no need to get angry. That that's in the uh, the movie, obviously. If I am, it is. It's your fault. So Bilbo's blaming Gandalf for being angry when in reality he's just he just he's the ring. He's just possessed by the ring. And he's evil, obviously. He wants to keep the ring. It is mine, I tell you. My own, my precious. Yes, my precious. Just like Bilbo said, just like Gollum said, calls the ring his precious, obviously. So the ring, just like the ring possessed Gollum, the ring is possessing Bilbo, obviously. The wizard's face remained grave and attentive, and only a flicker deep in his eyes showed that he was startled and indeed alarmed. It has been called that before, he said, but not by you. It was called by Gollum, obviously. But I say it now, and why not? Even Gollum said the same once. See, Gollum said it, right? It's not his now, it's but mine. I shall keep it, I say. Gandalf stood up, he spoke sternly. You will be a fool if you do, Bilbo, he said. You make that clear with every word you say. It has got far too much hold on you. Let it go, and then you can go for yourself and be free. So Gandalf is saying, look, Bilbo, let go of the ring. It's, go it's getting a hold of you. Look at you now. You're crazy, you're evil. Let go of the ring. Go on your adventure and be free of this ring, obviously. Be free. And Bilbo is obviously what? He's reluctant, obviously. I'll do as I choose and go as I please, said Bilbo, obstinately. Now, now, my dear hobbit, said Gandalf, all your long life we have been friends and you owe me something. Come, do as you promise. Give it up. So Gandalf's telling Bilbo, look, give up the ring, you know what I'm saying? Well, if you want my ring yourself, say so, said Bilbo, but you won't get it. I won't give my precious away. Again, Gollum called the ring his precious. Bilbo is now calling the ring his precious. He doesn't want to let go of the ring because the ring is... Is evil. It possesses people, and it's everyone. The one who bears it, it becomes as precious. Just like Frodo, when he entered Return of the King, he even Frodo couldn't destroy the ring. He said the ring is mine because why? Because the ring is everyone's precious, obviously. Right. That's how powerful the ring is, obviously. Right. I tell you, his hand strayed to the hilt of a small sword sting, obviously. Gandalf's eyes flash. It will, it will be my turn to get angry soon, he said. If you say that again, I shall. Then you will see Gandalf the Grey uncloaked. He took a step towards the hobbit, and he seemed to grow tall and menacing. His shadow filled the little room, just like in the movie you saw the shadow of Gandalf. Obviously, well, he's like, "Bobo Baggins," he says something like that. You know what I'm saying he uttered some, 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 some tongue, some tongue. Obviously, Bobo backed away to the wall. So Gandalf used magic. Obviously, he was mad. And Bilbo, Bilbo backed away to the wall, breathing hard. His hand clutched at his pockets. They stood for a while facing one another, and the air of the room tingled. Gandalf's eyes remained bent on the Hobbit. Slowly, his hands relaxed, and he began to tremble. So Bilbo was scared, obviously, because Gandalf is Gandalf is a, is a wizard, obviously, right? He's powerful. 
I don't know what has come over you, Gandalf, he said. You have never been like this before. What is, what is this all about? It is mine, isn't it? I found, and Gollum would have killed me if I hadn't kept it. I'm not a thief, whatever he said. I have never called you one, Gandalf answered, and I am not one either. I am, I'm, try, I'm not trying to rob you, but to help you. That's in the movie, obviously. I wish you would trust me as you used. He turned away, and the shadow passed. He seemed to dwindle again, and the old gray man bent and troubled. Bilbo drew his hand over his eyes. I am sorry, he said, but he, I felt so queer, and yet it would be a relief in that way not to be bothered with it anymore, because the ring possessed Bilbo, obviously. It drove him mad, obviously, right? It has been so growing on my mind lately. Sometimes I feel I felt it was like an eye looking at me, and I'm always wanting to put it on and disappear. See what I'm saying here? The ring possesses you so much. Here, what he's, let me repeat this. Sometimes I felt it like an eye looking at me, obviously. You can get the symbolism of Sauron's eye, obviously, from that passage, obviously. Like, so, a eye looking at me. And I'm always wanting to put it on. He always wants to put the ring on and disappear. And don't you know, or wanting to get it safe, and pulling it out to make sure. I tried locking it up, but I found I couldn't resist it within my pocket. See, Bilbo, Bilbo told Gandalf, I'm going to leave the ring to Frodo. He sealed it, put on the mantle, and he put it back in his pocket. Why? Because the ring is as precious. The ring possesses what? It possesses Bilbo, just like it possessed Gollum. Just like it possessed Frodo, as Frodo couldn't even destroy the ring. Because that's how powerful the ring It possessed Boromir. Boromir tried to take the ring from Frodo. Because the ring is what? The ring is powerful, obviously. Hence why, in my opinion, the, the main protagonist is Sauron. But the real main protagonist is the ring. Because the ring is evil. The ring is alive. Obviously. Right? Here he said, I'll repeat this. I tried locking it up, but I found I couldn't resist. I couldn't, I couldn't rest without it in my pocket, obviously. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't seem to be able to make up my mind. Then trust mine, said Gandalf. It is quite made up. Go away and leave it behind. Stop possessing it. Give it to Frodo and I will look after him. Oh, so so Gandalf is telling Bilbo, look, let go of the ring. Give it to Frodo. Go on your adventure. As you've had the ring long enough and it, you need to let it go, it's been what? You've been possessing it long enough. Obviously. Bilbo stood for a moment tense and undecided. Presently he sighed. All right, he said with an effort. I will. Then he shrugged his shoulders and smiled rather ruefully. After all, that's what this party business was all about. Really to give away lots of birthday presents. And somehow, it hasn't made it easier in the end. But it will be a pay to waste some of my preparations. It will be quite spoiled the joke. Indeed, it will take away the only point I ever saw in the affair, said Gandalf. Very well, said Bilbo. He goes to Florida with all the rest. He drew a deep breath. And now I really must be starting or someone else will catch me. I have said goodbye and I, could, I couldn't bear to do it all over again. He picked up his bag and moved to the door. You have still got the ring in your pocket, said the wizard. See what I'm saying? The ring is so powerful that even after Bilbo saying, I'm sorry, I'm going to leave everything behind to Frodo. Yeah, I'm leaving now. He still leaves the ring in his pocket because he, it's hard to let go of the ring. Obviously, it's hard to let go of the, it's hard to let go of the ring, obviously, because the ring is that powerful. And that, that's why I think, that's why I think how J.R. Tolkien portrayed the power of the ring beautifully. That Bilbo had the ring for 60 years and he couldn't let go of the ring. Even Frodo, who only had the ring for a good while, Frodo had the ring. Frodo had the ring for for, for for a long time, but not as long as Bilbo. Even Frodo couldn't get the, get rid of the ring, because that's how what, that's how powerful the ring is, and that's what Gerard Tolkien portrayed beautifully when you read the story. As Lord of the Rings, I told you, if you read it, if you read it in your head, the book can be pretty boring. But if you read out loud the story and you if the, you bring the story to life, it becomes more interesting. Obviously, as I'm pretty sure all you book nerds are obviously interested. In this discussion, when I talk about Lord of the Rings, obviously. Almost done the book here. I only have a good eight pages left. Seven pages left around there. Right. Well, so I have, cried Bilbo. And my will and all the other documents, too. So he left his will to Frodo, like I said earlier, obviously. You had better take it and deliver it for me. That will be safest. No, don't give the ring to me, said Gandalf. Put it on the mantelpiece. It will be safe enough there till Frodo comes. I shall wait for him. The reason why Gandalf can't have the ring... Because Gandalf is so powerful, he's scared that if he if he if he possesses the ring, he might use his power for evil instead of for good. Obviously, and that's why Gandalf didn't want to touch the ring because Gandalf is already powerful. He knows that if the ring gets to him, he will end up using his power for evil instead of for good. Obviously, right, right. He says this. No, don't give it. Don't give the ring to me," said Gandalf. "Put it on the mantelpiece. It'll be safe enough here till Frodo comes. I shall wait for him." Bilbo took out the envelope, 
but just as he was about to set it by the clock, his hand jerked back and the packet fell on the floor before he could pick it up. The wizard stooped and seized it and set it in its place. A spasm of anger passed swiftly over the hobbit's face again. You see what I'm saying? The ring is so evil that when Bill will even let's go of the ring, all of a sudden he's angry again because what? He wants the ring is his precious, obviously. Because the ring is evil. It's hard to let go of the ring. Obviously. A spasm of anger passed swiftly over the hobbit's face again. Suddenly he gave way to the look of relief and a laugh. Well, that's that, he said. Now I'm off. Then he went out the hall. Bibble chose his favorite stick from the stand. Like in the movies, he has his, he has his, he has his stick, obviously. His staff, whatever it is, right? Then he whistled. Three doors came out of different rooms where they had been busy. Is everything, all, is everything ready? He asked Bibble. Everything packed and labeled. Everything, they answered. Well, let's start then. He stepped out of the front door. It was a fine night, and the black sky was dotted with stars. He looked up, sniffing the air. What fun, what fun to be off again, off the road with dwarves. By the way, that's not in the movie. The three dwarves that accompany Bilbo, that's not in the movie, obviously. And I swallows a bunch of dialogue, obviously. You, I read the dialogue, you, you guys get an idea how a lot of dialogue is cut from the movie, obviously. Right. It was a fun night, and black sky was dotted with stars. He looked up, sniffing the air. What fun, what fun to be off again, off the road with dwarves. That is what I have really been longing for for years. Goodbye, he said, looking at his old home and bowing to the door. Goodbye, Gandalf. Goodbye for the present, Bilbo. Take care of yourself. You are old enough and perhaps wise enough. Take care, I don't care. Don't you worry about me. I am as happy now as I've ever been. And that is saying a great deal. But the time has come. I have been swept off my feet at last, he added. And then in a low voice, as if to himself, he sang softly in the dark. The road goes ever on and on, down from the door where it began. Now far ahead the road has gone, and I must follow if I can, pursuing it with eager feet until it joins some larger way, where many pass and errands meet, and whither then I cannot say. <laughs> Thought I should sing it, I'm saying. And pause sign for a moment. Then without another word, he turned away from the lights and voices in the field and tents and followed by his three companions, the three dwarves, obviously, which is not in the movie. He went around into, the, into his garden and trod down the long, sopping path. He jumped over a long place in the hedge at the bottom, blah, 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 all these different bumps, right, to the meadows, passing into the night with a rusted wind in the grass. Gandalf remained for a while, staring after him into the darkness. Goodbye, my dear Bobo. Until our next meeting, he said softly and went back indoors. Frodo came in soon afterwards. I found him sitting in the dark, deep in thought. He has, has he gone? He asked. Yes, answered Gandalf. He, he has gone at last. I wish, I mean, I hoped until this evening that he, that it was only a joke, said Frodo. See, Frodo even thought it was a joke, obviously, right? A prank. But I knew in my heart that he really meant to go. He always used to joke about serious things. I wish I had come back sooner, just to see him off. I think really he preferred sipping off quietly in the end, said Gandalf. Don't be too troubled. He'll be all right now. He left a packer for you. There it is. That's in the movie. He left the ring, obviously, right? Not exactly in these words, but that's in the movie. Frodo took the envelope from the mantelpiece and glanced at it, but it did not open. It, but did not open it. You'll find the, find his will and all the other documents in there. I think. So Frodo has a Frodo. Bilbo gave Frodo a will, obviously, right? So Frodo's rich, obviously, right? Said the wizard. Whereas the movies don't really portray Frodo as being rich. Like he is rich, but you, you like in the movie you don't really get any hints of Frodo being rich, pretty much. Whereas in the book, Frodo's actually rich. Like, um, Bilbo leaves his will to Frodo and all that stuff, right? 23 minutes here. Right. You'll find his will and all the other documents in there. I think, said the wizard, you are the master of Bag End now. And also, I fancy you'll find a golden ring. The ring, St. Frodo. Has he left me that? I wonder why. Still, it may be useful. It may be, and it may not, said Ganov. I should not make use of it if I were you, but keep it secret and keep it safe. Wait, and keep it safe. Now I'm going to bed. Right. As master of Bag End, Frodo felt it his painful duty to say goodbye to the guests. Rumors of strange events had now spread all over the field, but Frodo would, would only say, no doubt, everything will be cleared up in the morning. After mid midnight, carriages came for the important folk. One by one, they rolled away, filled with full but very unsatisfied hobbits. Gardeners came by arrangements and removed in wheelbarrows those that had inevitably remained behind. Night slowed past, the sun rose, the hobbits rose rather later. Morning went on, people came in, came and began by orders to clear away the pavilions and the tables and the chairs, and the spoons and knives and balls and plates, and the lanterns and the flowery shrubs and boxes and crumbs and crackerbats, 
cracker paper, cracker paper, the forgotten bags and gloves and handkerchiefs, and uneaten food, a very small item. Then a number of other people came without orders, bagginses and boffins and boggers and tugs and other guests that lived or were staying near. By midday, when even the best fed were out and about again, there was a large crowd at Bag End, uninvited but not ex unexpected. Frodo was waiting on the steps, smiling. This is not in the movie, by the way, but looking rather, because we're cleaning up from the party pretty much, right? But looking rather tired and worried. He welcomed all the calls, but he had not much more to say than before. He replied to all inquiries was simply this. Mr. Bobo Baggins has gone away, as far as I know, for good. Some of the visitors he invited to come inside, as Bobo had left messages for them. Inside in the hall, there was a, there was a pile of large assortments of packages and parcels and small articles of furniture. On every item, there was a label tied. There were several ta labels of this sort. For Andalar Took, for his very own, from Bilbo, on an umbrella, right? Andalar had, had carried off many unlabeled ones. For Dora Baggins, in memory of a long correspondence with love from Bilbo, on a large waste paper basket, Dora was Drogo's sister and the elder surviving female relative of Bilbo and Frodo. She was 99 and written Rams of good advice for more than half a century, obviously. Right? So Dora is Frodo's mother, is, is Frodo's father's sister, obviously. Right? From Malaburl's, hoping it will be useful from BB on a gold pen and an ink bottle. Who cares, right? Mill never answered letters for Angela's use from Uncle Bilbo on a round convex mirror. She was a young Baggins and too obviously considered her face shapely. For the collection of Hugo Brassing Girdle from a contributor on an empty bookcase, Hugo was a great borrower of books and worse than usual at returning them. For Lobella's sack full of Bagginses as a present on a case of silver spoons, Bilbo believed that he had acquired a good many of his spoons while he was away on his former journey. Lobelia knew that quite well when she arrived later in the day. She took the point at once, but she also took the spoons. No one cares about this information, right? This is the only this is only a small section of the assembled presence. Bilbo residents had gotten rather cluttered with things in the course of his long life. It was a tendency of hobbit holes to get cluttered up, for which the custom of giving so many birthday presents was largely responsible. Not of course that the birthday presents were always new. There were one or two old mathems of forgotten uses that had circulated all around the district, but Bilbo had usually given new presents and kept those that he received. The old hole was now being cleared a little. Every one of the various parting gifts had labels, written out personally by Bilbo, and several had some point or some joke, but of course most of the things were given where they would be wanted and welcome. The poor hobbits, and especially those of Bagshot Row, did very well. Blah, 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 right? Old Gaffer of Gamsey's got two sacks of potatoes, a new spade, a woolen waistcoat, and a bottle of ointment for cracking joints. Old Rory Brandy Book in return for much hospitality got a dozen of bottles of old winyards, a strong red wine from the south farthing, and now quite mature, as it had been laid down by Bilbo's father. Rory quite forgave Bilbo and voted him a capital fell after the first bottle. Right. Four pages left. Good what? Four pages left, I'll be done. I'll be done this. I'll be done reading. I'll be done chapter one. So you guys now get an idea. So the first half of chapter one is prepping for Bilbo's birthday, obviously. And the second half is pretty much when Bilbo leaves. Bil Bilbo leaves Bilbo leaves the Shire, obviously. And then everyone, everyone what? Everyone's cleaning up in the party. And all these people go to his house and all that stuff. And Bilbo left Bilbo let some Bilbo left some stuff for some for some of for some for, for some of the guests of the party and all that stuff, right? Pretty much. Boring information, pretty much, right? There was plenty of everything left for Frodo, and of course all the cheap treasures, as well as the books, pictures, and more than enough furniture. So Frodo had a wealth of a wealth of possession, obviously, left in his possessions. This is not in the movie, by the way, right? There was, however, no sign or mention of money or jewelry. Not a penny piece of glass bead was given away. Frodo had a very trying time that afternoon. A false rumor that the whole household was being distributed free spread like wildfire, and before the long place was packed within people who had no business there, but could not be kept out, labels got torn off and mixed, and quarrels broke out. Some people tried to do swaps and deals in the hall, and others tried to make off with minor items, not address to them, or with anything that seemed unwanted or unwatched. The road to the gate was blocked with barrels and handcarts. In the middle of the common commotion, the sackful bags has arrived. Frodo had retired for a while and left his friend Mary Brandybuck to keep an eye on things. When, uh, when Otho loudly demanded to see Frodo, Mary bowed politely. 
He is indisposed, he said. He is resting. Hide, you mean, said Lobelia. Anyway, we want to see him, and we mean to see him. Just go and tell him so. Mary left them a long while in the hall, and they had time to discover their parting gifts of spoons. It did not improve their tempers. Eventually, they were shown into the study. Frodo was sitting at a table with a lot of papers in front of him. He looked indisposed to see Sackle Bangs at any rate, and he stood up, fidgeting with something in his pocket, but he spoke quite politely. The Sackle Bangs are rather offensive. They began by offering him bad bargain prices at between friends for various valuable and unlabeled things. When Frodo replied that only the things specially directed by Bilbo were being given away, they said the whole affair was very fishy. Only one thing is clear to me, said Otho, and that is that you are doing exceedingly well out of it. I insist on seeing the will. Let me shut the camera off here.